In Bulgaria, selection of volunteers for weightlifting addresses boys of about 11 to 12 years of age. In the course of two years, 80% of the coaching time aims at improving the children's health and fit and at developing their physical abilities. Within the system of training, Bulgarian weightlifters, this is the stage of preliminary coaching. This is the time when interest, to begin with, and later love for sport, are cultivated. The choice of exercises and their game-like character is not accidental. Depending on age characteristics, the organization of exercises is such as to arouse positive emotions and to attract youths to this manly sport. Besides the sporting games, jumps, coordination exercises, wooden sticks and medical balls are also widely in use. The competitive element brought in by relay races and the opportunity to compare abilities emphasize the functional and psychological effect. It is thus that, on the one hand, all-around development of the youth's constitution is achieved, and, on the other, the most important abilities necessary to the future weightlifters are tested. two-year period, exercises with a bar are gradually included. It is a compulsory condition that the bar should be lightened and the discs wooden. From a psychological point of view, it is best for the coaching bar to have about the same size, the same dimensions and color as the one used in competitions. Back squat is among the simplest exercises easiest to perform at the beginning. At the same time, it helps to feel and correctly regulate the tension of the basic group of muscles, those of the legs and the trunk. That is a point of moment, since they are of key importance in weightlifting. 
To prevent the appearance of undesirable complications in the waist area, leather belts should be used from the very first attempts. During squatting, the feet are apart at shoulder width. The toes are slightly parted. The muscles of the back are tightened to prevent bending of the trunk. The head is up. Requirements with respect to the position of feet, trunk and head are the same. The difference is in the functions of the arms. The elbows are lifted high to the front under the bar and must not be lowered or allowed to touch the knees. This is achieved by active participation of the muscles of the back which fix the trunk in a straight position. The fingers hold the bar securely and should not drop it throughout the exercise. Since deep front squat is an element of clean and jerk, its mastering at that stage will facilitate future work. exercise starts with clean and jerk because of the comparatively simpler structure of its separate elements in comparison with snatch. The consideration that greater weights can be lifted in jerk should not bother us because as we noted above exercises are carried out with a lightened coaching bar. The starting position is characterized by symmetrical positioning of the feet with respect to the bar center. The toes point aside outwards. The legs are bent at the hips, knees and ankles. The trunk is straight, the head is up. The hands grip the bar in a hook grip. Since the positioning of the separate parts of the body and the degree of leg bending are individual, two basic reference points are sufficient to take the optimum starting position. The subfemoral area should only touch the bar and the shoulders should be positioned exactly above it. This is acceptable for all lifters regardless of individual characteristics.
lifting the bar from the platform starts with consecutive activizing the legs and trunk deployers. First knee, then pelvofemoral joints are deployed. The first attempts are made slowly, a compulsory requirement being that the arms should be straight and the bar should be kept near the body. For the performance to acquire the necessary rhythm, amplitude and speed in attempts to come, deployment of the pelvofemoral joints is achieved with a powerful effort of the muscles of the back. The movement of the trunk is directed upwards and backwards. The head remains motionless and forms a still prolongation of the trunk. During the final stage of bar pulling, the body is on tiptoe, after which the muscles lifting the shoulders and the arm deployers join in the dynamic activity. The elbows are above the bar. Our experience of the past several years has demonstrated that the use of the integral method during the period of bar pulling and second pull mastering is by far more effective in obtaining results in comparison with a part by part one since there is actually no sharp delineation between the separate faces. When the muscles deploying the legs and the back return to stillness, under the impact of its own weight and the effort of the hands on the bar, the body starts a downward motion. During crossing with the bar, possibilities are created for the wrists and elbows to twirl under it. It rests on the shoulders and collarbone. The lifter takes a fully grounded foot position with a scope of leg bending that will allow the trunk to reach a height corresponding to the one at which the bar has been pulled out. Since high pulling out of heavy weights during jerk is impossible, from the very next lifting trainees are coached to squat lower till full squat is effected. The question arises, is that acceptable at the initial stage of coaching? Our answer is positive. Mistakes made are quickly corrected and good performances at bar cleaning with full squat can be achieved even at initial exercises. realization in clean and jerk is effected by jerking the bar above head level with tightly outstretched arms. The most popular and efficient technical device is front back leg positioning, the so-called split. At the beginning this is exercised without the bar. The lines drawn perpendicular to each other function as reference marks and correctors. The problem of which foot should be in front position is solved in simple manner. It is a matter of convenience. The front positioned foot should be fully grounded with a heel turned slightly outwards. The rear positioned foot should be grounded on tiptoe somewhat earlier with a heel also turned slightly outwards. Repeated performances are especially useful for the purpose of motive habit automation. Jerking of the bar from chest level starts with its gripping from racks. Elbows are well twirled under the bar, the trunk is straight and the head is up. Squatting and raising with the legs is carried out with fully grounded feet. During weight fixation above the head, the arms are brought to active work. Mistakes during first performances are unavoidable. Subsequent explanations and corrections gradually clear up the performances. When the split is well performed, 
the arms are tightly stretched in the area of the elbows, the trunk is perpendicular to the platform and the weight is evenly distributed on the two legs. The integral performance of clean and jerk is an important point. Sufficient time should be allowed for that purpose and optimal performances should be aimed at. Before mistakes are cleared up, coaching should not go on ahead. Once acquired, erroneous motive habits are difficult to eliminate and erase. For this reason, it is of special importance that attention be drawn beforehand to anticipated mistakes and causes leading to them. Sometimes, however, unsatisfactory performance is due to individual characteristics. In such cases, excellent knowledge of motive biomechanics is required in order to adapt the technique to the individual characteristics without violating its general principles. In such cases, an important role can be played by models. Best performances of clean and jerk in the group may be used as such. Most convincing for young weightlifters, however, are the performances of master lifters. Videotapes, as well as live performances, give an exact idea not only of external appearance, but also of the degree of effort making within the separate phases. That helps the coaching process and facilitates passing on to individual technical perfectioning. Use of scraps of various materials in the coaching process preserves the skin on the inside of the palms from possible damage during repeated attempts. coaching, despite experience and already established motive habits, we will still come across definite difficulties. They are mainly due to the complex coordination requirements of the exercises. The starting position is, as a whole, familiar. Positioning of feet, trunk and head is very similar to the one during the deep squat style in clean. The main difference here lies in the wide grip. Exact recommendations as to its width cannot be given. It depends on the anthropometric peculiarities of the individual, on the flexibility and sense of coordination. That is why every competitor has his own grip. The wide grip in snatch determines efficiency and great speed during bar pulling and second pull. Bearing that in mind, and on the basis of already acquired skills, in their first attempts, trainees perform pull and second pull with a greater speed, ending with toe lifting of the body, and including, in the final effort, the shoulders and the arms. Here again, keeping the bar near the body is a must.
natural way to lift the weight above the head is to activate from that point on the arms. That, however, is incorrect since it does not correspond to the technical rules and creates the wrong motive habits. The arms press the bar and the legs remain uncurved at the knee. begins with what the bar kept above the outstretched arms. That is how sense of accuracy and equilibrium are created. The trunk is straight or slightly bent forward in the waist. The weight is evenly distributed on the two legs. After the performance of the introductory exercises with squat, the bar over the head, we proceed to snatch with minimum bending of the legs at the knee and pelvofemoral joints. The difference in comparison with incorrect performance we saw at the beginning is that when the leg and trunk approach a lower fixation point. On the basis of the skills so far attained, every following snatch is done aiming at lower squats till full squat is reached. Complete snatch in full squat position, however, does not mean that it has been mastered. We can claim that it is only when the performance reaches a certain rhythm. Legs shifting is a point of great moment during full squat positioning. Until recently, the belief prevailed that they should be shifted forwards and aside. Practice and performances of master lifters have shown that this is not so. Shifting should be directed aside and backwards. The theoretical explanation runs as follows. The sum total force applied to the weight center of the system lifter bar at the final of the pull out brings about equilibrium, breaking in a backward direction. The performance of every competitor bears its own specific style that is determined by the individual morphological characteristics, the speed force qualities, flexibility, and sensor.
and alike illustrations give greater reality to explanations that have not given the very beginning the precise idea. On the other hand, live demonstrations of master lifters supply the coach with an opportunity to give exact Forms of coaching may differ. In Bulgaria, the practice of uh, making contacts with competitors from the best club teams and with the country's representative team is widely popular. During training sessions of the national team, young lifters will be able to watch power clean, power jerk, clean and power jerk,